Industri kopi di Indonesia berkembang sangat pesat. Tidak bisa dipungkiri, membantu perekonomian di Indonesia. Mulai dari para petani, pekerja, hingga penikmat kopi. Mengukir jejak lebih dari 20 tahun, Starbucks Indonesia telah berkontribusi positif bagi masyarakat Indonesia melalui dukungan, serta membina dan memberikan pelatihan kepada para petani lokal untuk menciptakan kualitas kopi terbaik dan berkelanjutan, sehingga kualitas hidup para petani lokal pun meningkat. Starbucks juga telah menciptakan lapangan pekerjaan untuk para karyawan di seluruh Indonesia, serta berbagai kegiatan sosial yang berdampak positif terhadap masyarakat dan lingkungan. Dalam Tabel Talk kali ini, saya akan berbincang dengan CEO PT Sari Cafe Indonesia atau Starbucks Indonesia, Anthony McAvoy. Hey, Sanshui. Hello. Hi, good to see you again. How good are you doing? Good to see you. How do you do? Oh, very good. Welcome to Starbucks Metropole. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you very much for inviting me. You're absolutely our pleasure. Can I be honest with you? Please. This is the favorite Starbucks location, Starbucks Metropole. Wow. <laughs> It's one of my favorites too. I live, I live not too far away. Really? So I like to come. I'm also a big fan of cinema. Mm. So for me, quite an important store. Uh, Probably be because I'm the 90s generation, so uh, it has a lot of memories here. Okay, yeah. Okay. I'm 80s generation, but I'm also Boule, so I wasn't <laughs> here. But it's still a beautiful store for me. Do you want to share with me the inspiration of this Starbucks Metropole? Well, uh, yeah, this is our 20th uh, reserve store here mm. in Indonesia. Mm. Uh, it's probably our 17th in, in Jakarta. All right. We've been here for 22 years this year. 22 uh, years? Indeed, in Indonesia. Wow. So when you get an opportunity to be in a heritage building like this, you really have to step up your game and represent what is the best. Exactly. Uh, both in terms of Indonesian coffee and heritage, Uh, as well as being able to showcase the, the building, which is quite a beautiful right. building. So if you look at from the mural on the walls, which is from Lake Toba, North Sumatra. That is Lake Toba? Absolutely, yes, That's absolutely. So, nice. so on the mountains around Lake Toba, we have an incredible coffee growing region. Yeah. Uh, we have a farmer support center mm. there in Verstagi, not too far from there. And really, they've just started growing coffee again on Samosir uh, in the middle of uh, Toba. So it's, uh, yeah, for me, it's a, it's a beautiful store that best represents both in terms of Indonesian coffee heritage, clearly our leadership in that uh, for coffee totally, uh, but also brings out the best of the building. Best of the building. I think so. But I can see the touch of modernity as well. Uh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. of course. Yeah. So we, we, you know, we are Starbucks at the end of the day. Mm. So we want people to feel comfortable. We want people to feel engaged. So it has amazing Wi-Fi, good location, <laughs> great parking, of course the food and you know some of the best coffee. I in always the world. feel home when I'm here. You do? <laughs> great. Thank no. you so much. How do you ensure that actually all the Starbucks location has it, the taste of modernity, yes. but also has the historical essence as well? Yeah, well, we're slightly unique in terms oh. of in Starbucks in that we design all of our stores ourselves. Oh. So we don't use any third-party designers. We're, this is all design ourselves. We start with the building, we start with the location. And of course, what are we trying to achieve in that location? Oh. So if it's an office building for a quick cup of coffee, it's all about speed of service. Okay. Uh, where something like that to relax and take it easy before you go see a movie in a heritage building. We start at that point oh. and we try to bring a touch of the community Uh, a nod to wherever the location is to it, as well as being you know, quite a functional place. So everything from having community tables, mm. to having comfortable seating, great lighting, Wi-Fi, mm. and of course all of that is wrapped around amazing coffee and even better partners that we have here. Okay, so it's like a way of life. It is a way of life, and yeah. we're quite good at it. You know, we're in 80 countries globally, we have a lot oh. of stores here in Indonesia. So over time, we get better and better, I think, as we open more and more stores and learn that little bit as we go. So you say about stores, how many stores do we have now in Indonesia? Oh, so we'll finish this year, we'll touch uh, 600 stores 600. here in Indonesia, absolutely. You're going to add it? I 
think so. <laughs> I think so. We've been here for a long time now. Uh, you, you say earlier, 22 years, right? Well, the 17th of May, we will be 22 years old in Indonesia out of 53 years for Starbucks globally. So it start 2002. 2002. Plus Indonesia, Se 17th I remember. of May, absolutely. Great I remember, memory. I remember. It was wow. a long queue. <laughs> that was before my time, before my time. But yeah, 17th uh, of May, uh, 2002, wow. the very first store opened. Wow. And uh, if you think about it, you know, it took sort of five years for the first 50 stores. And now that's easily uh, done in less than a year for us uh, in the current run rate. So let's continue. Please. Previously, we talked about this beautiful Starbucks Metropole. Now, let me ask you another question. It started 1971 in a very small coffee shop. Let's say tiny. Very tiny. Tiny yes. in uh, Seattle. Pike Place yes. Market. I was Absolutely. there once. Wonderful. Yeah, I was queuing. It is. <laughs> And now we are here in Jakarta, Indonesia. Absolutely. In this beautiful reserve store, absolutely. Oh. Yeah, is, there change, is there any changes, the narrative for the brand itself? Uh, absolutely. I think the brand, what it's been very good at doing is evolving oh. over time. So if you talk about Pike Place, yeah. uh, it is a very small store. Oh. For many years, it was just scooped coffee, whole okay. coffee that people would then grind and consume at home uh, before. And then it was for many decades, just a handful uh, of coffee shops. But as it grew, clearly it had to stand for something. It had to have a mission, had to have a, a reason for existence beyond just selling coffee. Um, and that mission and values has been core to Starbucks belief uh, for a long time. So in the 1990s, uh, our founders and leaders at the time got all of our partners. Mm. And we call our baristas, our employees, we call them partners. The partners. So they are partners. They are, they're my yeah. partner. And I'm very proud to be mm. their partner. Uh, but they got those partners together to really understand as a collective what we stand for. Oh. Uh, and that mission has been core to what we have done for a long time around community, around what we've given back, around sustainability, around connection. Oh. And then in March of last year, our new CEO, Lakshman, uh, sat down again with the leadership team and partners to come up with what does it mean to be Starbucks okay. in 2023 and beyond. And he came up with our new mission and values, which is... Uh, with every cup, with every conversation, with every community, we nurture the, the limitless possibilities of human connection. Oh, that's nice. It is nice, isn't it? Uh. And it's always this thing with uh, mission and values that it can be in a book, it can be at your roots yes. or your public expose. But actually for Starbucks, it really is a driver of a lot of the things we do. Okay. Especially when we talk about connection. Yeah. And that ultimately boils down to who we are and what we are. We talk about connection and community. Mm. Um, and that's been part of the DNA for Starbucks Indonesia for the last mm. 22 years. Uh, and is part of Starbucks globally in terms of being a force for good in the communities uh, that they operate. But more importantly, just having that connection. Connection mm. with each other, connection yeah. with our community, connection with our planet. Uh, has always okay. been very important. This is very interesting when you mention about uh, connection and then um, communities, the place when you operate as well, mm. because the tangible impact is very important. Absolutely. Yeah. So how does it go actually? Uh, we have always believed, and we believe for a long time, that we have to put more back into the planet and the community than we mm. take out of it. Um, and that's, a, that's got to manifest in many different ways. Mm. But if you talk about sustainability, yeah. you know, we have a number of different initiatives. We had a, here in Indonesia our, our Greener Nusantara, yeah. which we launched in 2014, about reducing plastic, about reducing our impact on the environment. Mm. We were one of the first markets globally uh, to go completely recycle PET mm. in our cold cups, so our iconic cold cups. None of that is virgin plastic. Okay. It's all recycled plastic. Um, and then we have a number of initiatives around our, our people, what we do community. We have a college impact grant okay. for our team. So we send some of our partners to finish university or to do the next stage of university. We do a lot of uh, CSR, whether that's with uh, Habitat for Humanity, hmm. building houses hmm. or building toilets in the villages. Um, whether that is with Planet Water to give access to clean water to some communities that otherwise wouldn't have it. So 
we built 17 of those water towers in Indonesia uh, over the last 10 years. Okay, but talking about um, sustainability, talking about the future, talking also about innovation. Yes. So, Starbucks, do you have um, innovation in the future? Oh, we're constantly innovating. Hmm. If you're standing still, you're actually going backwards. Yeah. And we innovate across many, many different ways. So if you talk about innovation with our people, hmm. we're now in a digital environment, yeah. a digital phase. Yeah. So how we communicate with our customers, how we innovate in our beverages. We just brought back Refresher, hmm. uh, one of our beverage platforms that has been very successful. We innovate in our packaging mm. to try and reduce our impact on the environment. We innovate, we just opened our new greener store in uh, Jalan Adiaksa in Jakarta Selatan. Yeah. And that's a greener store, certified greener store. Uh, you know, EV charging, less impact on the environment, less carbon emissions, less landfill. Wow. So we're, we're constantly innovating. It's, uh, it's something we take a lot of pride in, uh, but ultimately we believe we have to. Are you going to build more like that? Yes. Oh. Absolutely. That oh. was just the first one. Uh. That's the first one. So it will be. It will become our benchmark going forward. Okay. Uh, as we build more stores, it'll be more and more green to have less and less impact on the environment. Okay. By the way, we are sitting here, and then we're having a glass of water and also the bread as well here. Thank you very much for the bread. Salamat makan. Salamat makan. So can we eat it? Please. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Coffee. Thank this you. is Indonesia Bali Butter Volcano. Thank you. So, this is for you. Thanks. Okay. Thank you for so you. much. Yeah, so actually, this coffee is very special for uh -huh. us, Starbucks Indonesia Market, because this coffee is only uh, uh, served in Indonesia, sourced and roasted only in Indonesia, specifically in Bali area. So, Batagri, actually, you're very lucky to I'm try very it lucky. here. I'm very so, lucky. Yeah, this coffee is very special because uh, maybe you can taste the coffee and smell the aroma. Wow. And you will get a sweet, uh, roasty aroma. Uh, you can taste also a low acid coffee mm -hmm. with a hint of, of sweet black rice yeah. and sweet coconut milk aftertaste. Right. Definitely get that coconut yes. milk after. How is it? Oh, it's it, nice. It's nice. It's very nice. Yes, it's very special yeah. for us. So yeah, I will leave this uh, coffee for you while you are continuing your conversation. And please enjoy, and I hope you like this coffee as much as we do. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. Wow, she's very good. <laughs> she is very good. Felice is actually she's one of our uh, Q graders. She's wow. a, a, an Arabica Q grader, mm. uh, as well as a regional coffee master. Wow. It's very good indeed. Talking about coffee, talking mm. about coffee. So this one is very special yes. because only in Bali. But then, where is actually Starbucks or origin uh, coffee from? So in Starbucks, we only source Arabica coffee. Mm. And we only source really the top quality okay. in terms of coffee. So if you think about it, it's really three growing regions. Okay. You have Latin America. Latin America. Africa. Okay. And what you would call Asia Pacific. Okay. Includes Indonesia. Mm. Uh, and there's about 70 countries that grow Arabica coffee. And we buy from about 30 of those. Mm. Uh, we also buy a lot of coffee here in Indonesia. Uh, as one of the top producers of what is really the finest Arabica coffee really? I think in the world. Certainly in my opinion, but I'm okay. a little bit biased. <laughs> but where is it from in Indonesia? Oh, we buy coffee from, a lot of coffee from oh. Sumatra. Sumatra. And actually we have a farmer support center in Sumatra where we have a number of agronomists who are out supporting farmers okay. uh, with open agronomy to have better yields and better ways of farming to okay. get a better crop. But we also have East Java, West Java, Central Java, Toraja, Sulawesi, wow. Bali, Flores, Papua. We source from all over Indonesia. Um, we have about 72,000 farmers wow. that support us here in Indonesia. And we buy that coffee, not just for consumption in Indonesia, but globally. Globally. So your Sumatra coffee, you can get it if you're in Shanghai, New York, or you go to uh, South Africa. You walk into a Starbucks, you'll proudly see Sumatra coffee on all of those shops. But shacks. I heard that's the favorite one. 
the Sumatran coffee? Absolutely. We have about 400,000 partners mm. in Starbucks. Mm. And regularly, actually I think consistently since yeah. the 80s, Sumatra has been the number one partner favorite. Wow. And it's my favorite. It's what I have every single day. Short Americano, double shot with Sumatra coffee. Okay. But my concern is how do you actually um, maintain the relationship with the farmer here in your new year? Oh, well, we, we take it very, very seriously. Mm. So clearly everything we do boils down with coffee at our core. Okay. So, you know, happy farmers with a happy price, uh, delivering the best quality okay. is very much within uh, our interests. Mm. Uh, and we have relationships through, <coughs> excuse me, through many, many different ways. So we have the support center where I said we had the agronomists. Mm. Uh, those agronomists are doing open source agronomy. So any new variant, any way of farming that creates better yield, any training, we will make available to everybody for free, irrespective if you supply Starbucks or not. Okay. So, and then through our list of suppliers, we have something called our cafe practices. What is that? Well, it talks about sustainability. It talks about, you know, equitable transactions mm. for the farmers. So they're getting the best price for the best quality. We're talking about fair practices. We're talking about the environmental impact that farms are having. Exactly, that's very important. Yeah. Incredibly yeah. important. It's important because the, one of the biggest concerns of coffee, clearly at the moment, is yeah. climate change. Well, climate change, supply chains, and Absolutely. then what else? Economic fluctuation. Absolutely, and sustainability. Yeah. So having a sustainable crop that continues to add value and give cash yeah. to families is very, very important to us. But how do you adapt with, with all this, um, what's it called? Um, um, what is happening nowadays? Yeah. So uh, we, we invest an awful lot of money in coffee farms. We have, we have 10 of those uh, farmer support centers okay. globally, uh, including our own in Costa Rica, um, Alsacia. Uh, actually, Felice just came back from Costa Rica, okay. where she was learning all about the work we're doing. Mm. And they're creating a lot of new varietals um, that also are resistant to climate change, you know, use less water, less resi more resistant to leaf rust, uh, which is all becoming more and more difficult as the planet warms up. Mm. Clearly, Arabica coffee grows at a high elevation. It needs those cool yeah, times yeah. really to, to um, develop the taste profile. So we're investing an awful lot in these varietals, mm. and we're also giving away millions of coffee seeds. And certainly in Indonesia, we've given away you know, nearly half a million new coffee trees mm. uh, to farmers across uh, the country. Okay, but um, there is three aspects actually that sure. you have to really emphasize. There's the environment, yes. social and yes. governance. Absolutely. So how do you really actually be involved in this three aspects? Oh, we do it in lots of different ways. Mm. So certainly from an environmental perspective, mm. we invest in and we research some of the biggest technology. Mm. So if you think about processing coffee, right? So coffee processing involves a lot of water. Uh, so we've invested in new machinery and equipment that we're yeah. donating to farms that can use up to 30% less water. Yeah. Uh, from a societal perspective, we have the Starbucks Foundation mm. where we do a lot of grants. We work with Mercy Corps, we work with Lutheran World Relief to help coffee farmers, specifically women, uh, to develop their business skills and also ancillary businesses. Why is it about women? Because uh, women make up a big part of coffee farmers, specifically okay. in Indonesia. Okay. If you look at Indonesia, a lot of coffee farms are small holes, mm. uh, coffee farms that are run and cultivated by women. Women really drive a lot of the mm. uh, coffee scene, in, certainly from a, a, a bean perspective. I'm here glad you realized it. <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely. Always. <laughs> Always. <laughs> yeah. So, um, what do you think is the next chapter about this uh, coffee industry in Indonesia? As in, in, in a Starbucks uh, perspective, in a way. I, I think from a Starbucks perspective, or just from a wider perspective, mm. um, I think we have to really focus on the environment. Okay. You know, reducing our impact or reducing the impact mm. that coffee has on the environment is incredibly important. But as you see, and you, you can walk along any street now, mm. coffee culture is absolutely yes. at its peak here yes. in Indonesia. So whether it's in Jakarta or you go to Jogja or you're in Bali, coffee culture is really the core. Mm. And access to really good, really great quality coffee and amazing baristas is becoming more and more prevalent. So I think we all have to up our game to stay ahead of the curve, um, but access to such amazing coffee, the passion yeah. that we have for coffee, and a lot of our partners come from coffee communities. 
Right. So their passion for that really helps us up our game when it comes to developing our coffee culture. Okay. You know what, Anthony? Let's finish our coffee sure. and let's have a break. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to come back okay. after the commercial break. <laughs> Thank you. Enjoy. So Anthony, um, let's talk something serious here. Um, I really have to ask you. Let's talk about boycott. Okay. So, are Starbucks, the partners, vendors really impacted by the boycott? Unfortunately, yes. Hmm. Unfortunately, yes. Hmm. How bad? Um, yeah, it's it's not been a, it's not been a, a pleasant few months, especially yeah. for our partners. Um, with a lot of mistruths and misinformation that has been spread online and social yeah. about the brand. Yeah. We have had a number of incidences here in Indonesia uh, of violence towards our partners, oh. of abuse, yeah. uh, of vandalism yeah. to some of our property. And the biggest impact really is not about the sales or anything else, it's about the mental health of our partners, mm. uh, for them to be you know, associated with this. And it's associated in a, in a point because it's misinformation. Okay. You know, really when we look at it and we think about it, for us, it's incredibly important that the truth matters. Okay. The truth matters. And uh, we've been trying to get that message out there in terms of what the truth is in regards to the situation. But uh, it would be remiss of me to say no, but unfortunately we have been impacted, yes. So how do you, how do you actually address this concern? Um, I think fundamentally, we need to be clear that we're not a political organization. Okay. You know, we are a coffee chain. Okay. Uh, we sell coffee, we want to be a force for good in the communities in which we operate. We have done that for the last 22 years yeah. in Indonesia. Um, and really, we put our partners first. So their safety, their security, um, their mental well-being and their health, and of course their wealth for their salary and their family is incredibly important to us. Um, we plan to be here for the long term. Mm. So for us, really, it's about putting out the facts. Okay. So what are the facts? So if we come into the store and we have the QR code okay. and we have some facts uh, set out about who we are as an organization. You put this in all the tables? It's in yeah. all of the stores, yeah, absolutely. Okay. So you will, you will see that there. So putting out the facts mm. for us is incredibly important. But I think it's also something we need to say that we as a company have always condemn hate speech, we condemn any acts of violence against the innocent, and we really hate that weaponization uh, of speech and misinformation. And I think we just really have to come back to truth really matters. And the impact of misinformation is tangible on people's lives. But in the business side, have you sure. seen a um, decrease of sales, let's say? Do you close any stores in Indonesia? So I would say that we are in Indonesia for the long term. Mm. You know, we've been here for 22 years. Yeah. And in Indonesia, in mm. 22 years, lots of things uh, happen, happen well. over yeah. time. We, are, we want to be here for the long term. Yeah. Uh, and we've invested and continue to invest, not just in our stores and our partners, but in the community and in the farms uh, here in Indonesia. Mm. And we see that as a very long term investment, hand in hand. Uh, with the people and the communities in which we operate. Okay. So we haven't closed any stores yet, mm. and we haven't let any people go yet. Um, and I hope it doesn't come to that. Okay. So no impact of the stores or anything about this boycott, right? Well, in Indonesia? You will, in, Indonesia. Yeah, impact is there, yeah. definitely. But not with the closing but of the stores. We're also so. benefit of being yeah. part of a larger group. Mm. And um, yeah, we, we haven't taken that step. Okay. There is a bees and the bus. The bees and the bus are there. So again, I have to ask you: sure. Is it true that the CEO of this parents' company, let's say the MAPB, is resigned because of this? 
the previous Anthony. Uh, Anthony Cotton. Yes. Uh, Anthony Cotton has been part of this business for 22 mm. years. Mm. He was responsible for mm. starting Starbucks in Indonesia. So is it true that he's resigned? Uh, it's true he's resigned. Because of his boycott? Not, nothing got to do with the boycott. Okay. So uh, we had to do an OJK filing because Anthony has actually moved uh, to head up the digital business mm. for MAP, okay. our parent company. Okay. Uh, they have a big digital business. You know, we have the DigiMap business. Mm. And Anthony Cotton is still employed at MAP. He now runs that business. It was just an unfortunate uh, timing for an OJK filing that we had to do as he moved from one business entity to another. But it's uh, completely unrelated to the boycott. So it's not true? No, not true. He has resigned, but not true it's because of the boycott. Okay. He's just moved to another business unit. Okay, so it's clear. Very clear. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Very clear. So, Anthony, let's talk about the future. Sure. What's next for Starbucks in Indonesia? For us, really, it's, it's we will do what we've always done, right? Mm. Try to focus uh, on our mission, on our values, on serving the communities in which we operate. Mm. Um, one of the things we will do is we have community stores as well, which mm. are where stores where we contribute elements of the profit from those stores to the community in which they serve. We have one in Tana Abang. Mm. We have Tatapuri, which is for Orang Tuli. So right. those who use sign language or identify the sign language will open a second one of those uh, in Yogyakarta mm. uh, later on in the year. Uh, but fundamentally, we'll really just focus on delivering the message that we have mm. around being a force for good uh, in the communities that we serve. You're going to emphasize in this community? We try to. Yeah. We try to. Not everybody wants to listen, but uh, we try to. So last but not least, sure. is there any messages that you want to convey before we end this conversation? Well, one, I would like to say thank you for coming down. Uh, it's a, you know, been a, a, My pleasure. a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the, the, the last thing I would like to say is, again, what I, I said at the beginning, truth matters. Oh. Truth matters. Um, and understanding facts and really getting to the core of an issue is very important. Uh, misinformation has real impacts on people's lives. Yeah. Um, you know, we are 6,000 partners here in Indonesia and their lives are incredibly important to me yeah. to protect and to make sure they continue to have a, a, a good employment and life. The vendors that we support, mm. the farmers that we support, uh, we're incredibly proud to run Starbucks here in Indonesia uh, for many, many different reasons for the partners that have come through the system, for the work that we do in communities. And I would like to see that continue and to thrive. And I think, um, I would just finish on the very last one, which is, <laughs> you know, consider truth, mm. consider fact, and consider impact. And uh, yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you. Thank you for coming down to Starbucks Reserve Metropole. Thank you very much for inviting me. Yeah, and thank you very much for the nice coffee. Oh, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is for the great success for you, Anthony, and also for Starbucks Indonesia. Thank you. So much. <laughs> thank you.